So this is basically just the story of how I started my business and I think it might be interesting because I really like hearing stories of other people's startups. This is not actually a tutorial or a how-to guide because obviously there's so many different factors that go into making a business what it is. But I also hope that my story might be able to help some of you make better decisions if you're thinking of doing something similar. So going back to the very beginning, I first had the idea of starting my own business in 2010. As some of you might know, I had been working as a graphic designer and manga illustrator for many years before that. And I just thought it seemed like a fun and logical next step to try starting my own design label. So here's the very, very first thing I did. After coming up with the name, I registered the website immediately. And then I thought, this is going to be quite a big project, so I needed to make a plan. And I just got this notebook, wrote the name on it, and then I just made a list of all the things that I had to do to make this idea into an actual brand. It says Macaroon, I needed a logo, open bank account, get a credit card, get a PayPal account, apply for a business license, which is what you need here in Austria. And, and then I had stuff like maybe do I trademark my logo? Do I trademark the actual design of the product? So, and then the very last one is number 10, which just says maintenance. That's Facebook, Twitter, blogging, shipping, packaging orders, customer service, and just general PR. And it's funny because I remember when I was writing this list, I was looking at all of this and thinking, oh my god, there's so much to do. And I can't wait to get to the very last point because for me, I thought if I get to here, then I've made it and I can just actually enjoy running the business. The funny thing is I actually completed all this within a year. It took about <clears throat> nine months and it was a lot of work, but it was done. And then I had the website and then I, I, I launched my website and then I've literally been doing number 10 for almost four years. Like this is, this is all I do every day, but it takes up a huge amount of time. So in early 2012, I had everything ready. I launched my site and I knew obviously it was going to be hard at the beginning because you don't have any followers. You, you know, nobody knows who you are. You have to really like get your name out there. But I really underestimated how difficult it was to even get people Firstly, to get people to know who you are, and secondly, that they'd actually want to buy something from you. And I think my biggest mistake in the beginning was just assuming that as long as you have an online shop, as long as you have products in that shop, people will want to buy that. And unfortunately, that's simply not the case. So I had this problem that soon after I launched, I realized that the sales wasn't going as well or as quickly as I assumed. In fact, it's incredibly difficult, which I think some of you might know already. And some of you, if you don't know about it, you need to be prepared for it, that it's really, really hard to sell things online. If you have an online shop, you really need to be so creative in, being, in promoting that and in working together with the right people so that someone actually wants to buy from your shop. My problem was that I actually did not have any money at that point. So I, I put, I financed the first part of Macaroon through my own savings. And it took, as I said, I, I, was, I worked for about nine or 10 months and the websites and all the products and all the other bits and pieces, I financed that myself. But once the site was live, I thought, okay, I can do promotion with social media. That's free. I can, just use word of mouth, you know, that's all free, and then my shop will start making money, and then I can get that back. But obviously that doesn't happen like that. So what really saved me was that I found out there was a program in Vienna from the Vienna Business Agency that gives out business grants for creative projects. So I thought that was perfect. I, I put all my information together. It was useful because at that point, Macaroon already existed, so all I had to do was just have to describe the business. Um, I, I could show them the website, I could show them the products, and I just said, you know, I have all this, but I just don't have any money to promote it, and that is obviously what I needed the money for, and I kind of wrote a very detailed breakdown of how I would use the funding, and I said I would go to this trade show, I would 
um, work with this PR agency, I would spend this money on product photos, then I would spend this money on travel costs, and, and this is exactly what I plan to use the money for. So I sent that through and I was so happy when it was approved because it basically meant that I had funding to really take Macaroon to the next level. And of course I know that maybe for lots of people watching this, this is not something that you'd be able to access in your own country. But I also feel that if you really wanted to get your business off the ground, there are so many ways to get funding through a bank loan, which is what most businesses do. You could use Kickstarter, you could use crowdfunding. Um, I think that if I hadn't actually um, received this grant, I would have gone straight to Kickstarter or Patreon. Or I would have just kept on working as a freelancer and saved up money and probably done exactly what I did, but just a few years later. So once I got the money from the grant, um, I immediately started putting that into product photography. Um, I did start doing Facebook ads, I got someone to do PR. And the funny thing was, even though, again, I thought that getting the money would have solved everything, but it still wasn't easy. For instance, I did a whole PR campaign and it was quite expensive, but it actually didn't really bring any results. And I feel the problem was that the products at that point just weren't as mature or the products weren't as special as I thought it was. I definitely sold more than before, but it was not anywhere in the range of what I wanted to actually be able to live from my business. So I, as the brand started to slowly grow, I realized I had a huge problem with logistics because all my products were relatively cheap. They had very low price margins. They were things like stickers, postcards, posters, and then at the same time they were quite big so they were very bulky to sometimes they were quite bulky to ship sometimes they were quite thick and being in Austria all of my orders go overseas so I would often people would end up having to pay three times the amount for shipping than what the actual thing was that they ordered and obviously that puts a lot of people off buying from you in the first place so around end of 2012, I decided to relaunch the brand as a jewelry label. So the reason for jewelry is because it's small, it's light, it's really easy for me to ship and store. And I put a huge amount of effort into creating a product that was such a high quality that it really justifies the price that people pay for it. And of course, the price of the product itself or a piece of jewelry is going to be higher than the shipping price, which makes both seem reasonable by comparison. And what I did was I used my experience as a graphic designer and I designed everything using Illustrator. So everything in vector files as PDFs. I drew all the shapes of the things that I wanted. And then I sent the files off to a supplier who then made the shapes out of um, laser cut stainless steel. And then, so in May 2013, I went to my second trade show, which was Pulse London. It felt exactly like the right place for Macaroon because they have this whole area called Launchpad, which is just for really small brands. You actually get cheaper rates as well, like it's, it was very affordable. And it's just full of independent sort of one person businesses. There are just loads of people who love making things. and. It's a way for these small brands to come in contact with uh, actually a lot of buyers from really big stores. So even after, so after the first two trade shows, I didn't actually get a lot of orders. But I wasn't too surprised because it's a fact that if you start doing trade shows, you'd have to do it for at least two years before you can expect any big orders. And this is mostly just for their own security because if you're a big shop, you don't want to risk ordering or doing business with a small label that kind of popped up out of nowhere and then suddenly closes down after six months because they just don't want to do it anymore. And as a small label, you also have the responsibility and often financial responsibility that if you want shops to take you seriously, you need to go to these shows and often you need to go, go there for at least two or three years in a row in order to have the exposure to the right sort of people. So going into the summer of 2013, I began to really focus on product development 
because even though I had a rough idea of um, the things I wanted to do, I still felt that the brand lacked um, some uniqueness. It just lacked that kind of wow factor where you can show a product and people will know that that is from your brand. So at the start of 2014, I was getting a lot of interest for this bracelet design, which meant that I spent a lot of time having to work on the bracelets. And I've already mentioned on Instagram, I basically I use Modena clay, and this air dry polymer clay. And then I have this little mold, which is like this. It's, it's, I made it myself out of, um, what's it called? It's called silly gum. It's that two part mold putty, which I'm sure lots of crafters use. So I have this and I color the clay using acrylic paint. And then I basically press them out and I have this, which is a dental tool. And I use that to sculpt the feet. And then I basically just get, I had these other, these other macaroon shells, like the raw macaroon shells, which I then stick onto the bracelets or necklaces. So as I worked, I started listening to a lot of TED Talks in the background. And this is a channel which I'm sure lots of you know about. And if you don't, you should definitely start watching because it's all like really short talks, about 18 minutes long. And each one explains just something interesting. It just explains a concept or a project or a personal story, or it's just all like really interesting, like really positive um, ideas that are designed to make you think a bit more, like just to make you think about life and about to make you think about what, how this applies to your own life. So this, in May 2014, I went to Post London for the second time and I had a lot more time to prepare. I had a lot of new products and I was very excited about the new design and I felt that the brand was a lot stronger in 2014 than the year before. Um, it was at Post London 2014 that I met the buyers from Harrods and after they left, I was just completely stunned and I was... I, was, I couldn't believe that I'd actually have the chance now to um, work with Harrods. So after coming back from Post London, I really wanted to come up with some really good packaging that would look nice in a shop. So first I, I filmed this for one of my tutorials, which you've probably seen. And then I, I was just coming up with different ideas for sort of um, things that I could put on the packaging. Um, this was one so that I kind of did this, I wasn't very happy with it, I did that, was not happy with it. <laughs> and then I was just doing more, I was like different sizes. And then I painted this one, which I thought looked quite nice and the, the colors fit together well. I Then I scanned this and then I used Photoshop and Illustrator to kind of turn it into a packaging design. Going into the end of 2014, Macaroon started growing really quickly and I was getting regular sales online. And I'm just so happy that I've been able to turn this little brand into my full-time job. So I really hope that this video has been interesting for you, especially if you've just been curious about what I do and how Macaroon got to where it is over the last four years. For one of my upcoming videos, I really want to do a Q&A style thing. So if you have absolutely any question on art, design, comics, crafting, YouTube, retail, selling, then please leave all your questions down below and I will pick out as many as I can to answer in my next video. Thanks and see you soon.